Hi, welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. So I'm a transformation coach, I'm an energy healer, I'm a shamanic practitioner, and I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center CT, which is located in Westport, Connecticut. And at the center, we do a variety of workshops and trainings. Um, we have satsang once a month, which is Sanskrit for in the company of the truth. It's generally the third or fourth Wednesday evening of every month, and we'd love for you to come join us. It's just a, an hour of, really, we do meditation, we do some chanting, just a very low-key time to just be with yourself and just wind down and have a wonderful experience. So we hope you can join us sometime. Um, we also have a shamanic clinic once a month now, and it's the second Tuesday of each month. And that's an opportunity to just learn a little bit more about the shamanic practice and the healing. You can get a 30-minute healing. And it's really for the community. So it's, it's a volunteer um, contribution for that. So we'd love to see you there as well. So, you know, the Spiritual Connection Show is all about connecting with each other as well, about, as, well as connecting with our own spiritual selves. And each week we have a different guest and you can learn from them about their spiritual journey, what they've experienced, and that way you can learn more about yourself. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're glad you're here. So my guest this evening is Stephanie Besson. Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad you're able <laughs> to make it. So that's great. So I'm just gonna read a little bit about you to introduce you because our audience doesn't know you. Um, and actually, this is the first time I'm meeting you tonight as well, so that's the same. So Stephanie is a licensed massage therapist um, for the elderly and those on hospice care. That's your specialty. She's also the founder of the Connecticut Health and Wellness Practitioners. So that's a recent group that you started. So we'll hear more about that and everything that you do in a few minutes. Um, but first, I always like to ask my guests to start with, can you tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey, you know, how you got started, maybe how you got here, you know, what's important to you, that kind of thing. Um, so this is probably common, but I started with science, and um, I considered myself atheist. Um, I, can, I wanted to know the truth, and I wanted it in hard copy. Um, so I was never looking for a spiritual path, and I was receiving a massage every week, and all of a sudden, I was calm all the time, driving places, and I never knew that was possible. Mm -hmm. So I looked into going back to school, and I went to massage school oh, okay. for a couple of years. I found out later that they were um, Buddhist-led, and so we learned a lot of their mental um, skills from Buddhism, mm -hmm. um, which was very helpful. And I learned to trust your feelings instead of trusting what's on paper and scientific evidence. Oh, so more of your intuition or, uh-huh. Oh, that's interesting, okay. So that opened me up and I was happy there. That was good. And my mom got sick and she was in readmission at the time and decided to go to John of God in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and she kept saying, why don't you come, why don't you come? I said, no, 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 I'm going to Africa and I was doing all these things, mm -hmm. um, Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. And at last minute I said, I gotta go see this. <laughs> yeah. Can you just describe for people who may not know a little bit about John of God? John of God is a an internationally well-known healer and um, very controversial, or if that's how you say it. Mm -hmm. um, he heals um, people from terminated, terminal illnesses. Uh, doctors can see on x-rays when people go before and then come back and there's tumors missing. Mm -hmm. So there's evidence those doctors end up going down. Mm -hmm. um, 
so it was quite the experience. I went open-minded and not on any side of mm -hmm. looking for anything or um, closed off to it. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, from massage school, I learned how to trust myself. Right. So I didn't want to even hear all the statistics. I just wanted to go and experience it for yourself and see what I felt. Uh -huh. um, so, yes, I experienced more than I ex ever expected and ever knew that was possible. Wow. And it was a, a type of a knowing that awakening of, I've had these spirit guides all my life. They've always been there. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. My That's heart awesome. opened up. Mm -hmm. And I came back in um, what they call big love, that I saw in shamanism they call big love. And I just loved everybody. Oh, yeah. I miss that feeling. It's <laughs> amazing. So even though you weren't looking for a healing, you got one. Yeah. <laughs> because I, just by being there, is that how it works? Yeah, so my mom was going for her lungs and um, mm -hmm. I just, they said, what kind of intention would you like to set? And I mm -hmm. kind of just had an intention of that I had always been nervous and insecure. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to heal. Yeah, sure. That, that sense. I was healthy. I was a, a personal trainer. So there was nothing to heal physically. Right. Um, but emotionally or spiritually, um, you got what you came for. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and my mother healed from um, COPD. She was on oxygen um, before we went, and she came back home, and she was able to bake and walk, and, and she, um, what we feel is that she got extra time. So she did end up passing, mm -hmm. but she got some extra time. Yeah, where she felt well enough to participate in life and have good quality of life. Right, right. That's terrific. Right. Well, that must have been a fabulous experience. So then this newfound you, in a way, what, what, what did you decide to do? Well, when I came back home, I was still a personal trainer in Westport okay. um, at Target Training. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, from coming back, I could see people's spirits. So I could take all their ego layers off mm -hmm. and see their spirits. And a, one woman um, wanted to just keep closing. She was in politics, and she would just keep closing and keep the ego on top of her. Yeah. Um, but my clientele grew. Um, that's when I became ready to just blast open and, and do very well in the personal training field. And I all of a sudden started getting messages that it was time to leave. Oh, okay. So like spiritual messages? Spiritual message okay. when I was waking up in the wake up state, mm -hmm. um, when you're just waking up, yeah. and it was saying it's time to go. And I had worked so hard to get where I was. <laughs> Emotionally, my insecurity, it all like, it was all finally, that was all gone. Yeah. Everything was working for you. Were you surprised at these messages you were getting? I was um, angry. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I, I didn't see that. Yeah. Not terribly, but it's like annoyed. Are, like, are, are you kidding, kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> really? Seriously? <laughs> yeah. um, I had million-dollar trainers. They wanted to be my mentor, and I was saying no. <laughs> And the owner of the gym said, what do you want for you to stay? What do you want mm -hmm. to stay? I'll give you $15,000 increase in salary. What do you want? You want a loan? And I had to turn it all away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, he said, what is it, spirit? And I said, yeah. Yeah. Well, good for you. So then what happened? Um, <laughs> well, that was 10 years ago. Oh. And I'm, um, over that course of time, five of my family members passed away. Hmm. And I was able to be with three of them, 
at the moment that they passed. Oh, wow. So that was a huge transformation in my life. Um, now I'm the oldest generation in my family, so everybody is gone. Mm. Um, and I helped my mom. I had originally went out to Portland, Oregon, because I wanted to work out there with alternative medicine. Mm -hmm. But I had to come back to help my mom, and I knew something told me I needed to be back. Yeah. And she passed at home amazingly beautiful. She was yeah. so at peace. Yeah. <laughs> and you were a big part of that? Yeah. Like, yeah. There was a, a knowing that I needed to be that for her. Help her mm. have that peaceful transition. A part of my purpose uh -huh. to be there. Oh, wow. um, and then Let's see what else happened. There's so many different things. Um, it was, it's been a really a struggle to figure out what I have been called to do. Mm -hmm. um, moments of, what do you want me to do? What is this? What do you... Um, I know that I now am to help people pass peacefully. Um, because with my mom passing, I got to feel the peace that she yeah. got. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, knowing from the John of God experience, um, this peacefulness that exists. Yeah. Yeah. Just we, it's there. We just need to tap into it, right? And that and that love that that she described earlier. That's so beautiful. That and yeah. Just, just to have that connection with people. Uh, yeah, that does sound like you're calling. <laughs> yeah, I don't know yeah. why. I don't know why. Well, we don't need to know why, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, was, it went from that I loved everybody to, to that I helped the people, people passing. The transition. Well, that's a wonderful calling, and it's so, it's, it's so helpful and necessary, and I can't imagine anything more giving and beautiful to help people with that. So I'm, awesome. I, I'm still trying to figure that all out. And how, and how you get the word out to let people know and that type of thing. Yeah. So don't it, yeah, because that's not an easy thing, really. No, there's a lot of red tape. <laughs> right, right. And I'm supposed to listen to spirit, but I don't know that, that trusting yet and that, that intuition so good yet. Mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm. still learning again mm -hmm. on how to follow that. Yeah, there's yeah, there's definitely ways to, to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and is that how you got into the um, working with hospice um, care patients? Right. It okay. kind of developed on its own. We knew uh, two mentors in the same week said you have to work with the elderly, and mm -hmm. in two days I had a job at the Maplewood Assisted Living. <laughs> So After the universe that. heard that message. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> so Maplewood up in, um, they're all over in Connecticut. Newtown. Oh, Newtown, okay. And Stony Hill. Okay. Um, and I have a couple clients there. And um, yeah, so as you can imagine, it's not very big word of mouth. So it's, mm. it's me with them. And sometimes I pray with them and say, how am I supposed to help other people? Like, I'm helping mm -hmm. you. And I'll get some answers when I'm with them on what steps to do. So um, it's, a, it's a beautiful um, experience. It's so spiritual, but so grounding at the same time for me. Yeah, yeah. I would think because, you know, as a healer myself, I, I feel like every time I do a healing for someone, I am also being healed. You know, right, it works. right. It's really wonderful how that works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what's kind of funny is that I'm, uh, I don't feel like I'm so spiritual in my day-to-day -day life. I'm like a normal human being and with emotions and... Well, that's, the pa so that's part of being human. Too. <laughs> we, can't, we can't only be spiritual beings because we're in human bodies, right? Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, I'm... I'm working now again on um, doing more skillful things because I'm also a single mom, so that uh -huh. grounds me <laughs> and shakes me. Right, right. 
the energy is like, woo! <laughs> yeah, so you have, you have a son, right? Right. Uh-huh. And how old is so he? Seven years old. Yeah, that's a great so age. Yeah, well, that's, that, that does, I mean, that just adds more fullness, I think, yeah. to our lives. I, mean, I have one son as well. And, um, he's grown. He's an adult now, but um, it's wonderful because we learn from our kids, right? I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how we can, um, you know, assist them in becoming the best they can be. And it's really, that's what it's about, and then letting, letting them go into the world um, with that foundation, right? Yeah, and learning how to trust them that they know. Yeah, yeah, and how, you know, how they learn to trust themselves and their, their abilities, their everything about them, their intuition. Um, yeah. Because we're all, yeah. you know, we all really um, are the expert on ourselves first, you know, so we have to learn to know ourselves. Right, right. And then be the example for yeah, them too. Yeah. In exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just, just stay, um, just stay grounded, like you said. Right. And be the best we can be. So right. that's great. So you're going to continue to be this, um, do this for for elderly people. Yeah. Um, and well, you do the massage for them as well. So how does how does that fit in? It's massage that <coughs> I do with them, and then I um, I pray the whole time while I'm working on them, mm -hmm. and um, something just opens up, and I'm completely connected, and I can ask questions, and I could I get all the answers while I'm with them. Mm -hmm. I can't do this at home, <laughs> uh -huh. I, or maybe a little bit, but this is like. Um, multiplied. It's, it's much more effective for you to be there with them. Yeah. Uh huh. And I'm allowed to ask questions for myself too <laughs> in those yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, but it, I, so I'm working on their body, and I'm I feel a sense of where to go next. So I could mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. It's not words or um, anything. It's I need. I'll get a like a stomach ache or a gut uh -huh. wrenching Feel. feeling if there's pain um, and I have to go to that spot so I just trust myself on where to go to for their body and I do gentle work so it's also energetic too I, mm -hmm. I just light mm -hmm. pressure but it releases yeah. the tension yeah. so they're sleeping like this mm -hmm. all day mm -hmm. um, or in bed or they have. They also are medicated too, mm. so uh, they don't have to have all the pain. But it's. I think it's helpful to feel comfortable in your body. And I touch everywhere on their body, so it's like it's also a grounding for them too, mm -hmm. because they're in a spiritual place where they're almost passing. Oh, is that most of your patients are in that because they're hospice in hospice care? Yeah. So they're in. in there are. They probably go back and forth. Yeah. A bit. yeah. So I think it's helpful that I'm touching their feet and I'm, I'm actually. Yeah. Yeah. And it, that makes sense. And that I don't know exactly why, but I think it's good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <coughs> well, it sounds to me that you are you are a healer. Thank you. Thank yeah. That's that's, thank that's who you are. Whether you've had that official, you know, formal training or not, you, you are, because that's exactly what healers do. I mean, we just bring um, through us, we, we're the facilitators, right? So it's really spirit that's healing, and they're giving right. you the message of where to go and what needs more, and, um, and you're, you're fully embracing that, so that's, that's awesome. And the other thing with them, too, some people will say, that's so sad to work with them, and, I, and I, it kind of throws me off. I'm like, how is it sad? I have to think. Sad like, for whom, right? Yeah, I have to think back, like, what are with their perception of uh -huh. why is it sad? Because I don't see the disease, I see the spirit you and the. You see the light part. and the beauty, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. So are they sometimes conscious, sometimes not, or it just depends? Um, yeah, sometimes they'll be unconscious, and, but they'll wake up and say, 
oh, that's good, <laughs> and then go back. <laughs> uh -huh. So you know, you know they're really getting it, they're <laughs> yeah. feeling it. Yeah. And I can feel the connection, the energetic connection, too. Yeah. It's what a gift that you're bringing. Thank you. It's Thank just, you. It's just wonderful. Well, I think and we'll have to get the word out there more so people are aware that you're, mm. that you're there. Because I think there is a need, there's got to be a need for it. It's only going to increase, right? I'm hoping, yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping that somehow it connects and moves yeah. forward. Yeah, because there's people, you know, I mean, our population is aging, right? So there's got to, there's, I would think it would be a gro growing segment. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. how does that tie in, because um, you're the founder of this, or is it an organization, the Connecticut Health and Wellness Practitioners? How would you describe it? Um, I, I, I guess it's an organization. I, um, so from the John of God experience when I was there, they told me that there was different spirits that helped heal. God worked through them mm -hmm. to heal the people. And they were just um, like sh healers, mm -hmm. basically. So they were like showing us how to heal. And they were just another level to how to connect with God. Um, no, they, wait, are these, are these physical these beings? These are spirit or spirit? beings. They're spiritual beings, okay. And they um, are saints and doctors from this lifetime that have passed over. Oh, interesting. And healing compassionate spirits. That, mm -hmm. um, so when I was there in that energy, I said, I want to be part of their group. Can I do what they're doing? <laughs> and... Um, I had a little conflict because I knew when I passed I wanted to visit space and go see all the planets. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, well, then when I pass, I have to stay with them and be part of the group. How do I get to visit? Um, but in any case... Yeah, maybe on vacation you could go up. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll let me off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I may not come back. Um, but so anyway, I said, well, why can't we do this here? Why can't it happen here that we're together because they needed to be together to raise the vibration because our density is so low. Gotcha. So they had to be hundreds of spirits to raise the, oh, interesting. the vibration to heal Cause cancer. Because it was so powerful, I mean, such a um, serious illness kind of thing, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's where, okay, so that's how it works, interesting. And everybody that's there is <coughs> um, very ill very sick. Yeah, I've heard that. The doctors have told most of them that there's nothing else they could do. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, this is like their last resort. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, they told, so that's how you decided to, to form this um, practitioners, I wanted to, wellness practitioners? Right, I wanted to um, bring practitioners together so that we can help. But while you're on others, the earth? On the earth. Okay, okay. All right, so and it's like a little, it's, 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 the, it's, a, it's an earthly version of what's happening spiritually. Right, right. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So I kind of, I follow what I'm supposed to do with that. Um, I started it in 2011. I went to a few different holistic groups, and I said, I'm just not, something's not right. I had said this to a mentor, mm -hmm. and he had said, that's because you need to run your own. Run your own. Okay. Because I was feeling that there just had to be more compassion, because that's what, mm -hmm. at John of God, was the thing yeah. that healed, was the compassion, and they held it. I see. And, and that's what you're all about, is compassion. That's what I try to be yeah. and grow on yeah, as no, much I, as I can. No, I totally get that. Yeah, <laughs> you're like pure <laughs> compassion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's wonderful. So you did. So you started your own group. So I started my group back then. I had yeah. five people that we were building it with, and we had our first meeting with twenty-seven different practitioners, from physical therapists to um, nutritionists to reverends to shamans, um, nurses. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring everybody together that practices from a place of compassion and that could keep that compassion in their fields yeah. because it's so hard to keep holding that in your field 
when you're in Western medicine where you're anything. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's, it, it takes a concerted effort, I think, because of everything else that we have to do related right. to that anyway. Right. So right. that's great. So then what happened? Um, I had, so the, the first meeting was amazing, and then I had my, I became pregnant with my son because I was, it was time. My mom was um, not well still, and I felt this pressure from her that she, she didn't have a, a grandson or a grandchild. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. It wasn't my clock. I was kind of <laughs> like, that's later, but it was like, mm -hmm. and it was, that was great because she had him for two years before she passed, um, so they got to meet. Mm -hmm. um, then it took me a while to heal from everything, of loss of everything. We had stopped the group, and I put a Facebook group up on Connecticut Health and Wellness Practitioners in 2015, and it's now 600 people, practitioners from across the state, and they post um, different events. And then I had, I had started Facebook Live um, videos of different practitioners and that's when it grew it was like a hundred something and it grew to mm -hmm. where it's at that's now a great idea. Um, and I left it alone trying to build my practice with doing massage for the elderly um, and it's just recently if a few months now that I've been called back into running the Connecticut Health and Wellness Practitioners mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm doing different YouTube um, videos with practitioners at their locations. So I'm running around doing all everything that you have here oh, okay. <laughs> on my own. Um, and it's different from your show in that it's about more practical. I'm trying to find nurses and uh, yeah. so it's different. I'm not doing the spiritual side. I'm right now. Yeah. I'm well, it's probably embedded in it somewhere. Yeah. If you're talking about compassion and and, and holistic health, it's it's definitely embedded in there. And um, it's just not maybe the primary focus, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah, that sounds terrific. Um, and then I hold different events where we um, I call them soulful networking gatherings. So I'm trying to keep. Um, connect people's souls instead of mm -hmm. um, instead of a or I'm trying authentic connection yeah. having an authentic connection and a real deep meaningful connection of where you've been and where you want to go mm -hmm. and that type of thing yeah uh, that sounds perfect well there is, there is some of that that goes on in the TLC network that, that I belong to um, there's different groups that do different things, and, and there's always a lot of um, really nice events, and um, they do a lot at Sticks and Stones Farm up in up in Newtown. Yeah, if you're yeah. familiar with that, but um, with Bill Donaldson. With Bill Donaldson, yeah. So that's just an opportunity that occurred to me that yeah. um, might be a connection. So, so this is wonderful talking to you tonight, Stephanie. We're going to have to wrap up now. But thank you so much for being thank on the show. Thank you for show. having me. I'm really me. happy to meet you, and I, I think we'll stay connected now. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And thanks to our audience for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed meeting Stephanie Besson as much as I did. We'll put her contact info up for you if you want to learn more. And please join us every week for the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine, signing off. Good night and blessings. Thanks for being here. Good night.